event which is called Indomitable. You might recognise the name. And it's a celebration of Roy Domic's Morris Dancing Live. So this is about to start with how it all started. And it was because Roy shared a flat with someone called Alan Browning from Sandra Morris, who promptly invited Roy to dance in the team. So you can see Roy here on the right. Roy started dancing, and you can see him again here at the back, actually very suitably high off the ground, as he would wish from other dancers. So while Roy was busy enjoying himself with the Morris men and the occasional beer, Marguerite was also welcomed into the Morris world. Roy grew a beard. He donned an Andy Pandy outfit with Marguerite's help. And he fathered a rather large number of children, again with Marguerite's help. Roy became a leading figure in the Morris world. He taught wherever and whenever he was wanted, wanted including Cecil Sharp House, Sidmouth, and Halsey Manor. And in 2001, he was awarded the Eftus Gold Badge at Cecil Sharp House by Brenda Godrich. But back until the early 1960s, Roy and three of his sons danced with Abingdon Morris. And there's a close-up of Roy um, when they were carrying the mayor of Oxford Street. He also spent some time with Bounce and Morris. And now, descendants of that team, some 50 years later, please can you welcome Bounce and Morris. business of the Morris on the edge of the Cotswolds needs looking at in detail. That's what he spent a long time of his life doing. He was also a fool, and you can see him here on Sidmouth Esplanade, and a friend, and this is Roy with his friend Tubby Reynolds, also Sidmouth. So one of the great memories of the early 1970s in the modern history of Morris Roy's inclusive attitude to women. We'll now relive the story of his support for women learning to dance Morris at this festival. Surprising that the beginners workshop is causing a problem. Everyone loves to come along and learn the Morris dancing. I think, Bill, it's the word everyone that's causing a I will not have it! <laughs> Morris dance! Why? They even want to join in the beginner's Morris workshop! Ridiculous! And have you heard this? There's a suggestion amongst one or two of them, thankfully, that they might even wish to join in! Bill, I will not have it. 
Riff Jones. Just in case you didn't know who he was. Riff Jones. Riff Jones. Lucky, I wanted to have a word with you. Ah, oh, yes. Not before I've had a word with you. You placed me in an untenable and dreadful situation. An iniquitous position. Women can't learn to Morris dance. It's an impossibility. No, it's not. <laughs> your hands off me. <laughs> That's an offence. <laughs> you really don't understand. You really do not understand. We have problems enough getting men to dress up in flowery hats and dance around with bells on without then inviting everyone else to join in like every Tom, Dick and Harry. Oh, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. We want to promote Morris, not destroy it. Destroy it? You will destroy it if you allow ladies to learn the movements. <laughs> all right, Riff, all right. We'll put a notice in the festival newsletter. Good, good. Barring women, good or beginners, Morris. <laughs> Very exciting news. Very pleased to hear it. Anyway, I must run. See you all later. Thank you. You saved the day and probably the Morris as well. I'll now show you a video clip from when Roy was chair of the judges for the Morris G competition in 1990. Roy liked to say what he wanted to say as we are about to see. The great thing about being, you know, a adjudication thing is that you get this chance to stand up at the end and say what you think, not what you think, you know, what I think you do. And what's worse, the thing that they advocate by electing me to stand up at the end is I get to say what I want to say, <laughs> although they have heard it to the degree that it wasn't completely rubbish. Roy was as good as his word. He dug out dances that appealed um, to the newly emerging women's teams without especially upsetting too many Morris men. Here's Roy clearly enjoying his day out with Bath City Morris. In fact, he had strongly also supported the Morris ring, having stood for Squire and been a driving force behind Lionel Bacon's handbook of Morris dances that we all use. Roy also identified dances for women to explore, including those from the Cheshire Plain. And here is the typical notation from uh, Roy's books. Uh, this is Nutford with nice little diagrams showing the dancers where to go. He also um, hooked out some garland dances. Um, this is shown here by Minden Rose, who you'll see in a minute. And Roy can be seen playing at the back. And stay dancing. And here's Roy dancing with Abercorn. Roy Joy enjoyed many days out with different teams. So this was a day out in the countryside <laughs> with uh, Fleet Morris, who we'll see later. And he also um, spent time with Fleur de Lys. And Somerset Maids. And we see, we'll see Somerset Morris later on as well. He gave many instructionals. So Roy had also lent huge support to Bath City Morris in the early days, and also to the Morris Federation. And uh, this is one of the early AGMs. He was elected to be a friend of the Federation, the first friend the Federation ever had. <laughs> and he even made it to the Morris Federation's 40th 
anniversary in Bath in September last year. So we now have dances from three teams that Roy worked very closely with. And uh, we'll start with Minden Rose. Somerset Morris. So Roy travelled widely, making the most of work trips to Australia and America to visit local teams. Whilst in Australia, he linked up with teams of the Australian Morris Ring. Um, he always had a bit of a sense of humour. <laughs> this continued at Pinewoods in America. <laughs> Apart from the sheer fun, one of Roy's recurring themes was to encourage teams to develop their own ideas and styles. And the most prominent occasion of this was the workshops that were held um, as the advanced Cotswold weekends. And these ran for years from 1986 to 2003. His ideas inspired all those who attended, um, such as um, Dunn's Tune, seen here, you can see Roy, Roy filming on the left, and Morris Offspring, this is Lawrence Swift, who told Morris Offspring, and Cherry from Windsor. During those amazing work weekends, we worked hard, we tried new things, some of you here will recognise this, and ate new things, and were occasionally driven to interesting revelations. Somehow we all left our lives behind you in these weekends. We now have a short clip from one of the advanced Cotswold weekends showing Roy's special style of teaching. We now put your left hand, the one you shouldn't be holding a swing in your on your left hip. And you hop on the left foot to start with. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 right, right, left, 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 right,
Williams and Morris were always around and Roy facilitated their first appearance at Sidmouth in 1976. Windsor said, Wednesday of Sidmouth was perhaps the high spot of the past two years' effort. We were invited by Tubby and Roy to do one dance at the Cayley, along with the other sides who were there. Roy introduced us as particular friends of mine, which immediately armed us with confidence. We danced jockey as never before and brought the house down. And now, 40 years later, still the same people I think. <laughs> Here are Windsor to dance Alexander's Demise. chance to be with real people. Here is Roy telling of an interesting moment in his career. And, and the one which caused the most amusement was um, I went to see a team called Barley Morris who danced at Dudley in the Birmingham area and they had been, the, the couple we went to stay with had worked on the restoration of the Dudley Birmingham Canal tunnel and so on and we went out with them on the Saturday into the town centre to dance. I then saw the Dudley, saw the Barley Morris in their kit which had a large CND badge on the front so I thought oh my god. <clears throat> then they started um, to dance in the main square in front of a large crowd and the police inspector came up and said, not Morris dances as well, bug it off into the uh, shopping mall. And I realised we were part of what was a CND demonstration going on. So we went into the uh, shopping mall and had a, a very good show and brought in some young men to dance and decide who had never danced in a team with women and we're a bit surprised how strongly the women could hit them with sticks. <laughs> but <clears throat> it wasn't till afterwards when the security officer came back to me at RE and said, <clears throat> you're on this film of this demonstration, CND demonstration, what the hell were you doing there? And I said, well, it came as a surprise to me as well. <laughs> Boy always encouraged teams to be disrespectful but not disreputable. And of course that immediately thinks of one team here standing in the wings. So here to dance with, for us, with Roy's words in their hearts, is Great Western Morris. <laughs> Extraordinary. 
In the last hour, we've seen a small representation of those teams who were particularly grateful to and influenced by the boy. His legacy lives on. Thank you to everyone who contributed to all of you here for the celebration of Roy Domit's Morris Dancing Life. That's Beth, Sally and myself put this together. And particular thanks to Chris Cook, whose idea this was in the first place. And in the words of Roy himself, bugger off. <laughs>